Washington has its eye on private equity income as a possible new source of revenue. That income is currently taxed at the capital gains rate of 15 percent. Congress wants to tax it as ordinary income at 35 percent. This morning, in an exclusive interview with NBC, John Corzine, former Wall Street investment banker, now New Jersey's governor, gave Matt Lauer his view. I look at it as income, but you have this problem that you know, all you have to do is move to Bermuda or uh, any number of places around the globe and you would avoid that same taxation. Which some people would say could lead to a loss of jobs here at home. So should private equity income be taxed as capital gains or as ordinary income? Joining me now, Robert McIntyre, Director of Citizens for Tax Justice, and Gregory Markle, Partner and Chairman of the Litigation Department at Callatter, Wickersham and Taft. Nice to have you here, gentlemen. Pleasure. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McIntyre, let me start with you. Why, why change the tax rate? Well, it, w what we need to do here is make the tax rate that should apply, apply. These uh, investment funds are being run by managers who are being paid for their financial expertise, and that's earned income that ought to be taxed at the regular tax rates and be subject also to the payroll taxes. Mm -hmm. Instead, they're claiming that for tax purposes only, they should be treated as earning capital gains and pay a 15% rate or sometimes even less than that. And it just doesn't make any sense. Why should you know, corporate executives have to pay the regular rate. Ordinary working people have to pay the regular rates. Why are these guys being allowed to exploit an inadvertent loophole in the partnership laws and say, hey, even though we admit this is earned income, for tax purposes, we should pay it at a remarkably low rate. It's just not fair to everyone else. And, you know, they have so much money, they can afford to pay a little bit more in tax. Mr. Marco, what do you think? Well, I disagree with everything he said. First of all, the the history here is, is completely wrong. This, there's nothing inconsistent with current tax law, with the, way thing, with, the way, the way the tax laws are being treated by the private equity funds and the hedge funds. Most of the managers are paying ordinary income on the base fee and only on their investments, which they may or may not realize in the future, do they have a capital gain interest. So first of all, it's just wrong. Second... Well, let me just point well, out... Let, they, let him finish second, yep. and then we'll go back to you, Mr. McIntyre. Go ahead, okay. Mr. Markle. Second, the hedge funds perform a tremendous service for this country. The hedge funds are one of the most successful areas in the financial area. The financial area is one of the places where the United States is competitive. And providing these incentives, which are these carries, incent the managers to do well in their investments, number one, and number two, it aligns their interests with their investors. Okay. Mr. McIntyre, what about that? Well, let me just point out that Blackstone Group is, is in the middle of an IPO right now, and as part of that, they have put out uh, documents with the Securities and Exchange Commission, which state explicitly that to get around the Investment Act of 1940, they want to make it very clear that they are not engaged in investing, they are engaged in providing financial management services. That's the story they're telling the Securities Exchange Commission. They just want to be able to tell a different, inconsistent story to the Internal Revenue Service. While they were right in the IPO statement, they're wrong with the Internal Revenue Service and the loophole should be closed. Mr. McIntyre, what about those who claim, though, that the, as Mr. Markle pointed out in his opinion, that the, uh, the hedge fund and the private equity uh, dealers, dealers of the world create an awful lot of wealth for this country that trickles down and creates jobs? They don't create anything. They move money around. They acquire companies, lay off workers, lower wages, and then go public again with these same companies, but they're not in, in as good shape as they were before. Okay. Mr. Markle, what about that? Well, once again, completely wrong. Number one, they provide funds for startup companies and innovation. Number two, they, the latest studies, not just off the top of the cuff remarks, but the latest studies show that, that funds have created 600,000 jobs in the United States. There is a premium on, in, on innovation. There's a premium on eliminating inefficient management. If you eliminate inefficient management by acquiring companies, you can make them more competitive, 
overall our industri industrial base and our companies will be far more competitive as a result of the presence of, okay. of hedge funds and, and private equity funds. Gentlemen, I have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate your perspective.